around that day. And it wasn't just his ads. He continued to use his own platform. He told his supporters, who truly believed their victory had been stolen and who were ready to fight when, where, and how to stop what he believed was a steal. Donald Trump would issue a deliberate call to action. And just like in his ads, that was action, that action centered around January 6th. On December 19, at 1.42 in the morning, our commander in chief tweeted, big protest in DC on January 6th. Be there, will be wild will be wild. We know why he picked this day. It wasn't random. It was his last chance to stop a peaceful transition of power. And he gave his supporters plenty of time to plan. This was the save the date, sent out 18 days before the event on January 6th. And it wasn't a casual one-off reference or a single invitation. For the next 18 days, Donald Trump would make sure to remind them over and over and over to show up on January 6th. And he would tell them exactly what he wanted them to do. On December 26, he tweets, if a Democrat presidential candidate had an election rigged and stolen with proof of such acts at a level never seen before, the Democrat senators would consider it an act of war and fight to the death. Mitch and the Republicans do nothing, just want to let it pass. No fight. He's saying that the Republicans are doing nothing and have no fight because you are doing your job, taking on the constitutional process of certifying the Electoral College results. And he also suggests, President Trump, that if this was the reverse and the Democrats had lost, it would be an act of war. An act of war. That's how Donald Trump prepared his supporters for January 6th. He even stated again 14 minutes later to make sure his supporters understood, quote, the Justice Department and the FBI have done nothing about the 2020 presidential election voter fraud the biggest scam, all caps, in our nation's history, despite overwhelming evidence. They should be ashamed. And then he adds, history will remember. Never give up. See everyone in DC on January 6th. That phrase, history history will remember, was the only time, the first time, Donald Trump had used it in his presidency. And he sent this to 70 plus million Twitter followers the day they needed to show up and be ready to fight. On December 27, he reminds them again, don't miss it, information to follow. A few days later, December 30, all caps, see you in DC. This continues all the way up to January 6. On January 1, he states, The big protest rally in Washington will take place at 11 a.m. Locational details to follow. Stop the steal. You'll see that an hour later, President Trump retweeted one of his Twitter followers. That follower was Kylie Kremer, executive director of Women for America First, the group organizing the January 6th rally and the creator of the Facebook group Stop the Steal. Kremer tweeted, quote, the cavalry is coming, Mr. President, referring to the cavalry showing up on January 6th. She also added a website for supporters to RSVP and made clear what the message was. Hashtag stop the steal. And what did President Trump say in response to hearing that the cavalry was coming? A great honor, he wrote back. This wasn't just a single tweet. He and his organizers would do this over and over repeatedly. On January 3, another supporter tweets, we have been marching all around the country for you, Mr. President. Now we will bring it to DC. 
on January 6th and proudly stand beside you. Thank you for fighting for us. When President Trump reposted her tweet, she wrote back, best day ever. Thank you for the retweet. It has been an honor to stand up and fight for you and our nation. We will be standing strong on January 6th in D.C. with you. We are bringing the cavalry, Mr. President. We are bringing the cavalry. That was the consistent message. This was not just any old protest. President Trump was inciting something historic. The cavalry was coming. And he was organized. In her post, Ms. Lawrence tagged Kylie Kremer, the organizer of the event, whose post we just saw President Trump retweet. Again, you see, this is all connected. I won't show you all of the Twitter statements, and there are a lot, but here's one more. President Trump retweeted another of Ms. Kremer's posts, which had all the details of January 6 with the same hashtags. March for President Trump, do not certify, stop the steal. And in response, President Trump, he writes back, I will be there. Historic day. Before Congress, I prosecuted violent crimes in California as an Alameda County Deputy District Attorney. And when you investigate and prosecute violent crimes, you have to distinguish. Was this a heat of passion crime? Or was it something more deliberate, planned, premeditated? The evidence here on this count is overwhelming. President Trump's conduct leading up to January 6 was deliberate, planned, and premeditated. This was not one speech, not one tweet. It was dozens in rapid succession with the specific details. He was acting as part of the host committee. In fact, when he had assembled his inflamed mob in DC, he warned us that he knew what was coming. This was President Trump's statement the night before the attack. I should say this was one of his dozens of statements on Twitter in the hours leading up to the attack. I hope the Democrats, and even more importantly, the weak and ineffective rhino section of the Republican Party are looking at the thousands of people pouring into D.C. They won't stand for a landslide victory to be stolen. At Senate Majority Leader, at John Cornyn, at Senator John Thune. Thousands of people pouring into D.C. who won't stand for the landslide election to be stolen. It's all right there. And he tags senators to pressure you to stop this. And he warns all of us that his thousands of supporters, whom you'll see that the FBI had warned were armed and targeting the Capitol, won't stand for us certifying the results of the election. This was never about one speech. He built this mob over many months with repeated messaging until they believed that they had been robbed of their vote and they would do anything to stop the certification. He made, the, he made them believe that their victory was stolen and incited them so he could use them to steal the election for himself. This election was rigged. This is tyranny against the people of the United States, and we are not standing for it anymore. If we don't root out the fraud, the tremendous and horrible fraud that's taken place in our 2020 election, we don't have a country anymore. The left lies, they cheat and they steal. They are ruthless, and they are hell-bent on getting power and control by any means necessary. Can't let it happen. Can't let it happen. Stop the steal! Stop the steal! 
The Democrats are trying to steal the White House. You cannot let them.